BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host here on the site to teach you how to play guitar and banjo, but today's all about the mandolin and all about one of my favorite mandolin players, Mr. Nick Dumas. Good to have you in the cabin, my friend. It's great to be here, Ben. Thanks Absolutely, for man. Me. I've had such a good time just hanging out with you. You, oh, you stayed over with me last night. We got to talk this morning over breakfast about yeah. what we're going to teach today. I'm so excited for the folks to, to learn not only more about you as a picker and your history, but also um, about your original compositions. We're going to learn that, that tune yeah. that they just heard, Fish Caught a Bird. Yes, sir. And then we're going to talk about all, all kinds of technique and skill um, approaches that you use. Yeah. So we're going to cover your rhythm. We're going to cover how to create solos, improvisation, um, how to play slow songs, how to be in a band, how to listen. Yeah. Oh, do you remember how to... How to talk about all that stuff? Yeah, man, absolutely. <laughs> well, good, good. If you're watching here on the website as a Go Pick member, boy, do you have a lot to digest in front of you. It's going to be a lot of fun. Just scroll down the page. You'll see the rest of the lesson um, and course elements there. If you're watching somewhere else besides BanjoBenClark.com, like Facebook or YouTube, come on over. Become a, a Go Pick member. You can join yeah. Nick and I as we dive deep into the world of mandolin playing. Yeah, man. I'm excited. And me too. Nick, I want to start off by just letting folks who might not know who you are, might not know you, get to know you a little bit. All right. Uh, where are you from, Nick? Well, currently I live in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, up there. Way up yonder. <laughs> way up there, northeast Wisconsin, just up from Green Bay. I'm originally from, also way over there, uh, Seattle, Washington. That's where I was born and raised. And, and you spent time in Tennessee. I spent a little time in Jonesboro, Tennessee as well, yeah, when I... Uh, Moved out here to play with the band Special Consensus. That's right. And that's where I got to know who you were the yeah. first time, yeah. uh, for the first time, and really fell in love with your playing. Oh, and we'll man. talk more and more about uh, what I love about your playing okay. and why I had you in here <laughs> today. Uh, you also have a brand new solo project. I do. Yes, I do. I'm uh, excited about that. I'm very excited about that. Excited to have it out to the world and 
and glad people are enjoying it so far. I yeah, hope. so you can buy that on my site. You can find the link around here on this page, or you can you sell iTunes, all those places yeah, too. Yeah, it's all there. Uh, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, my Great. personal website too, so it's all. Well, you're doing something really special up there in northern Wisconsin with your wife, yeah. Hannah, and her yeah. family. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, we have a, uh, a music venue Literally in our backyard, our uh, we have a century-old dairy barn that we've restored into a wow. concert venue. I've and seen pictures. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's so it's just an amazing place, and I feel so blessed to just have that right yeah. in the backyard. But we do classic country, bluegrass, and western swing music shows all through the summer. The house band, my wife plays the fiddle, uh, my father-in-law plays guitar, my mother-in-law plays bass, and we have some friends come and join us as well. Steel player from Keel, Wisconsin, comes plays steel and don't wow. grow. And, well, I'm going to come up there and check it out. Yeah, the Fiddler's Farm. Is the Fiddler's Farm. So if you're up in Chicago and north, then you're close enough to drop in there and check out yeah. some great... Some yeah. great music. Thefiddlersfarm.com. All the information you need to know right there about so, us. So we'll talk more about your time with Special Consensus and those spectacular pickers and singers as we go throughout the course here. Um, I want to start off by talking a bit about your mechanics and approach to actually physically playing the mandolin. One, one of the questions that so many people uh, ask of players that they admire is what kind of flat pick do you like? And what are you playing with nowadays? I uh, have a blue chip. It's a TPR 60. 60 to be in there. Uh, one of the thicker thicknesses. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's... Well, I think they have a little bit higher, but I, I like this one a lot for the mandolin because it's a beveled edges, but a more rounded edge. Not super pointy, but not too round either. I feel like I can get really a full tone, but yet good attack. Well, it sure sounds good. And speaking of sounding good, tell us about this mandolin. This mandolin right here is... An absolute <laughs> beast. Uh, this is a Hind mandolin. Steve Hind out of New Hartford, Iowa. Hind Custom Instruments uh, built this mandolin, and it is just... Wow. It's I got dirty to, right now. But <laughs> I got to play it around the breakfast table this morning, and I was just blown away. I'm yeah. going to have to have Steve build me one. Um, you will not be disappointed. Oh, man. Yeah, Steve is one of the best guys in the world. Right. And his, everything he And builds. strings. Folks want to know about strings. Yep. I use Elixir Medium mm -hmm. NanoWeb strings. I love them. Uh, they last a long time for me. Um Special consensus, as you know, we play a lot mm -hmm. of music, a lot of dates. I'll go, man, I'll stretch a set of elixirs out for a good couple of weeks at least. Yeah, a couple, that's a lot of picking. Couple, that's a lot of picking. Yeah, a weeks for for that type of schedule. And I see that you have a tone guard on the back too. Yes, I, I do. A lot of those. Yes, they, they are make a difference. A huge difference, right? You know, getting the getting the back away from your body it lets it reverberate right. fuller, and it's just it let you. I want the instrument to sing to its fullest potential. So moving on to your to your right hand, or here we don't discriminate against lefties. So we'll call it your pick hand. <laughs> Right, moving on to your pick hand, do, have you always preferred a mandolin with a pick guard? You know, have you just gotten used to it. I've gotten used to it. I had okay. a I had a couple Collins mandolins before this, and they had pick guards on them just from the factory. Um, my first mandolin I had was an Eastman um, eight fifteen, and it didn't mm -hmm. have one. Uh, but I feel like I've changed my right hand technique a lot since then. Okay. But I got used to the pick guards. So and I would, like you, it. would you say that you anchor or you just brush or kind of support or how do you describe yes. your approach? Yeah. <laughs> All the above. It depends on, on what I'm doing at the time. But I, I usually either put my pinky down on top of it or I'll just kind of hang on to the side of it. Okay. A little Interesting. Bit as my anchor. Interesting. And, um, it helps me a we'll lot. We'll see that more up close as we progress through the course. Yeah. Um, as far as the pick angle in your finger, are you? Yeah. Do you hold the the angle or the point of the pick directly perpendicular to the strings, or do you find that you? I angle move it, it forward just a little bit. Okay. Like clockwise a little bit. Just, okay. Um, and like the beveled edge, edge on this, yeah, the mm -hmm. leading edge. The beveled edge on this pick helps a lot with that too. Um, but when I'm playing a solo. It helps it glide on and off. Right? Yeah, can, for sure. I can find some nice tone with, with it that way. It yeah. helps with speed and stuff. You know, one thing I've noticed about your playing is your thumb joint gets a lot of <laughs> movement. And, yes. and that's... Um, that it kind of reminds me of Tony Rice's guitar style. There's a few people have told me that, and to be honest with you, I have no idea where I picked that okay, up. Okay, I wondered if you happen. did that intentionally. No. So, where do you feel like you get most of your movement from? From your thumb, from your wrist? Or? A combination. Okay. A combination of both. Like uh, with rhythm, it's mostly just wrist movement. Right. Um, but with, with individual, like soloing, picking, 
Um, it de- kind of depends on the lick, but a lot of times I just do kind of an even combination mm-hmm. of thumb movement and wrist movement. What advice would you have for pickers out there that are looking to gain their speed and work on their pick hand technique? What, or what's the, the problem that you encounter the most with people learning to play? Well, um, one, having the correct pick is a big a big thing to help with smooth playing. But um, practicing scales and mm-hmm. practicing them slow at first is, is really important. And getting to know, I like, I like focusing on the details of what everybody's playing mm-hmm. versus the speed. Are you, a, are you a big alternate pick um, pro alternate pick guy, so yeah. meaning you you like to keep those downstrokes going on the downbeats, correct? And strokes on that beats, correct? Yes. Okay. You no, know, like whole, whole notes, quarter notes, always on the downstroke. Right. Eighth notes, sixteenth notes are alternating. Right. right? Okay. And uh, you know, if you can practice stuff like that slow and just, you know, I practice with metronome, and I recommend everybody does. Um, you know, start it at a slow, comfortable speed. Play yeah. whatever scale pattern, or uh, even if it's a song that you're working on. Um, start, you know, just inching that speed up a little mm-hmm. bit until you feel comfortable and inch it up again. And it works. When you yeah. said uh, find the correct pick, what do you? What mistake do you normally see with, with folks who have the wrong pick? What, what do they have? Too flimsy of a pick? Too thin? Too big? Too small? Yeah, um, well, for me, I like a thicker pick, like this 60 here. Because um, not only does it pull a thicker tone, um, it's easier to hang on to. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I don't, I don't want to grip super hard with it. Right. Because, you know, well, the talk harder, about that. Talk about your pick grip. Yeah. Uh, the harder you grip, the stiffer it's going to sound. Right. It's not going to ring. It's not going to flow nicely. I like to have a somewhat loose pick. I like it to be kind of floating around a little mm-hmm. bit in there, but still gripping it enough to where it's not going to fly out of my hands. Right. When I'm playing, but. Right. It's amazing how much of the tone is just transferred through the pick alone. Mm. And having that lighter, yet firm attack mm-hmm. uh, really pulls some nice tone out of the mandolin. What are the biggest mistakes that you see folks have with their pick hand that, that is obtrusive to them playing fast? Gripping too hard. Gripping too hard, really? Gripping too hard. Too much tension, huh? Too much tension. You know, you don't want to give the death strangle on a pick. And um, it's counterintuitive, isn't it? Because you think yeah. if you want to play faster, you want to grip it and, yeah, and exactly. push, push and pull harder. But that's it yeah. is counterintuitive. You, speed, would you say, comes from just being more relaxed? Relaxed, absolutely. You want to be as relaxed as you can. Again, not so relaxed where your pick is just going to turn into a feather and fly yeah. away. Um, but you know, being relaxed is key. Naturally, your body and your arm is going to want to tense up the faster you do right. something. And right. so, if you can kind of con- Learn how to control that, mm-hmm. then it will. You'll play a lot smoother. Yeah. It'll be easier on your hands. You'll won't get tendonitis or right. anything right. like that. Um, but yeah, having a lighter pick grip is is good. And you know, of course, on a faster song, you do want to. You still hang on to it, right? Pretty good. Um, but you know, just be relaxed. Yeah. Relax is is everything. So moving on to your to your fret hand, yeah. um, what are the big mistakes that you see students making there that you tend to have to correct more often than others? Another thing is gripping too hard. Gripping too hard. And okay. um, so there's there's a fine line, you know, if you if you're really kinda unsure how hard you have to push down on the fret, you know, start start light, give a little pressure, more pressure until it rings like a bell. And once you're, once you're there, you don't have to get grip any harder. Mm-hmm. And that's a common problem that a lot of people have is they push down so hard. And of course, you know, a lot of people have no calluses on their right. fingers right away. And so it'll hurt a little mm-hmm. bit more than normal. Once you get those calluses built up, you know, it's just, you don't have to push so hard. And also you don't want to strain your hand. Right. Again, you don't want to give yourself tendonitis or right. the carpal tunnel or so anything So the, like the mandolin neck, it rests on, where does it rest on your index finger there? So I kind of have have it kind of like a pivot point right here on my knuckle for my uh-huh. index finger, just kind of right in that area. Okay. And then I have my thumb up on the, the top side of the of mm-hmm. the fretboard kind of hanging. So I kind of have two points of contact with thumb mm-hmm. and then my front knuckle. But I also like to have some air space as well underneath the neck. I don't, I don't, okay. I try not to collapse my wrist. Gotcha. And cause for sliding and such like that, right. you're going to get stuck. So yeah. have that, have that open space there between and, 
kind of come at it from an angle. That's another thing too, is I don't kind of with my left hand. A lot of people will try to play straight they up. They try to just play straight up and down, like right. like like you're playing a bar chord all right. the time. That is so uncomfortable for and for impossible hand. to stretch. Impossible to stretch. Yep. If you come at it from an angle, like from the nut up mm -hmm. here, come at it like this diagonally across. Right. You can reach across, and it's a lot more. Yeah. I tell people, you know, your, your fingertips should be pointed towards your neck or mm -hmm. even toward your opposite shoulder yeah. um, for the correct angle. Absolutely. Any other um, overall tips that just come to mind to folks starting out? They want to be a good, fast, tasty mandolin player like you, but as far as technique goes, yeah. right and left hand technique. Um, you know, again, practice everything. Practice, start with everything slow. There's a lot of players that will you know, play along with a record or a recording they hear. They try to learn the song up to speed. Mm -hmm. And... Okay, you can play it, play it faster, everything. Now, ask them to slow it down to half that speed. Mm. It's a little bit more of a struggle. Right. So if you start the opposite way, if you start with everything a little bit slower, or a lot slower, and you can focus more on clarity mm. and tone. tone and timing, and uh, and uh, you just work yourself up from there, and you become a cleaner player that way. Yeah. And, then you could play a song at any speed because you know the song. You want to learn the song. Right. Like if you hear a song that you love on the radio, you start singing along, you know every word and word for word off the CD because you know the song. Right. There's a difference between knowing the notes and where mm -hmm. the fingers go versus knowing the song as well. That way you can yeah. play it anywhere. Well, speaking of which, in our next video segment, let's talk about crafting solos. Yeah. And let's talk about improvisation. Uh, let's talk about, we'll take a few fiddle tunes, actually, and maybe a singing tune as yeah. well. Talk about some different techniques that you like to employ to spice up your playing. That'll okay. be a lot of fun. Yeah. Huh? And awesome. people out there can kind of take a peek into uh, what you as a professional mandolin player think about as you're approaching your solos and arrangements. Right. If you're watching here at BenjaminClark.com, just go to the next lesson. If you're watching over somewhere else like YouTube or Facebook, come over to the site, join as a Gopiant member. You have access to this whole course and hundreds of other lessons. See y'all later.